welcome to Buffy and Crochet. I'm Buffy and check out my new shirt that I got. A friend of mine designed it for me and made this t-shirt for me for Buffy and Crochet. I love it. I think it's beautiful. But I want to welcome you to my channel. Um, I talk about crochet um, and pretty much just crochet because that's what I do. I like to crochet. Um, Today is February the 4th, so I hope that I'm able to edit and get this video up by Monday. I have a few things that I want to show you, but before I get started, I hope that everybody is doing well. I hope that you've had a great week, and I hope that uh, you were uh, able to watch my tutorial video on how to make the farmhouse granny square. Uh, if you weren't, please go by and, and watch it. And if you like this channel, please subscribe and like it and share it out. And hopefully we can have more people uh, talking about crochet and the different things that uh, we love about crochet. So let's get started. I have, um, it's called Chick Aaron Boot Cuffs. I made these. I think they're cute. You put them on your boot. This is made for an ankle boot. Um, and uh, I just love the, the stitching in them. It kind of looks like leaves. Um, and I just used an ivory. Um, I think it is... Uh, let me see. Yes, it's ivory and it's I love this yarn um, from Hobby Lobby is the yarn that I use. But look at the... The ribbing at the bottom and the ribbing at the top. You can put these in your boots and then and turn it and just have the cuff just over over the boot or I just slide it down over the the top of the boot itself. It's very pretty. Um, I like to make these in a different color maybe a gray but uh, I really like them and I also thought this would be pretty as a blanket. Um, just a moment. I made this little swatch um, and I think you know with these repeats it would be really pretty as a blanket or even a wrap. The difference is as you make this you can see how it bows out. The pattern causes it to bow out this way but you can make it without it bowing out and making it flat just like I did with this little swatch I made up and I'm actually thinking about making a blanket but I have several things in the works so I do not need to start another project right now but isn't that pretty I just love the texture the texture of it so nice I got this pattern from myhobbyiscrochet.com so I will probably put that here somewhere on the screen and I will also put that information in my notes uh, in the description but if you if you do not want boot, boot cups, cuffs or you're not interested in boot cuffs try this pattern as a blanket it's real pretty and it's not very difficult to do either I would say it's probably hmm, on the verge of an intermediate level so I would you know you, you will need to know how to read a pattern and and that type of thing to, to be able to do it but it is very pretty also one other thing to mention is if you go to my hobby is crochet.com and you see uh, the chic Erin boot cuff which is the name of this she also has different size boot cuffs um, or she has um, she has the charts or the the math already worked up uh, so you can convert this pattern into a taller boot cuff if you would like it for your um, your knee your boots that come up to your to your knee so try this so pretty so pretty I love the texture and I do think this is gonna make a beautiful blanket when I get to it because I don't need to add another thing to my list right now 
The next thing I want to show you all, and these are a little worn, I will say, because I, I wear them quite often and I haven't had a chance to show them to you or I just haven't got them up here to show them to you and I think I need to wash them actually and I think it would fluff them up. But these are Secret Garden Fingerless Gloves and I think they're so pretty and they have the little tassels hanging off of them and when you put them on they're warm and nice and they come right right where they need to be when you have your thumb hole and you're able to do things with your hands um, I just love them so let me show you a picture from the actual pattern here they are So I feel like they worked up very similar to what the pattern says. However, like I said, mine do need washed, but aren't they beautiful? They're just so elegant looking. Look at all those different stitches in there. And again, this is this was not difficult to do. I think I did these in one evening. Not difficult at all. Um, I love these fingerless gloves. So let me tell you where I, where you can find this. Secret Garden Fingerless Gloves. It's a free crochet pattern from Kirsten Holloway Designs. And again, I will I will post that for you so you will see it. And that was my phone. Someone's home. <laughs> let me put that on silent. Um, she has a lot of really pretty crochet patterns um, you know you might want to check out here's a closer look of a picture of the gloves uh, look at those tassels aren't they pretty they almost look like little hearts very nice let me show you mine see aren't they pretty I would move out of the way maybe it looks more like a clover than a heart I think it does it looks more like a clover but I think these would be pretty in any color your favorite color whatever your favorite color would be and I used a four millimeter hook and I used a yarn B alpaca twist now I don't know if you remember the cream sweater that I made that had the buttons it was from City Farm, City, mm, I cannot remember, um, City Studio, City Farm Studios, um, and that's where I made the, the sweater, and I also used the alpaca twist. Um, I don't know that I will use that yarn again, and here's why. You can see, you see the, the I don't like this. And not that it doesn't make a pretty texture, but I will tell you, this comes off very easily and it flies around your face and it will fly around your nose and it will just be very distracting. So when I make another pair of these, which I probably will, um, beginning of probably in the fall, I'll make another pair. I will not use the alpaca twist which is not what the pattern called for to start with, but I believe I just happened to have it, so I used it. Let me see if I can find. It says, I used a wool, a warm wool yarn blend to crochet these fingerless gloves so they are nice and cozy for winter. You can use either Lion brand wool ease what she says is pictured above. So this is the Lion brand wool ease that she used in the gloves, which that's very pretty. Or Patton's Classic, and that's all I have. Or Patton's Classic. So I think if I make them again, I will probably use the Lion brand wool ease. 
And I really do like the color of uh, it's a pink or a blush. I do think that's very pretty. I like it a lot. So I may make the same color or I may make two. Uh, a pair in the blush and maybe a pair in a different different color. I don't know. I really like white, but I don't think white gloves for me would work out very well because I think they would be very, very dirty in no time. Which these are very, very dirty, but I think the white would just really show it so much more. But try you these fingerless gloves. I'm telling you, they are not difficult to make and I love them. Love, love, love them. Love everything about them except the little fuzzies that come off and aggravate me. The next thing that I'm working on, well, I guess those two were finished projects. Well, I know they are. <laughs> those were finished projects. So this next that I have on my list is not a finished project. So let me skip it for just a moment and I'll tell you about my sweater I made. Um, I'm excited about this sweater. I really like it. Now, anyone who is experienced in making clothing probably sees a lot of mistakes. Uh, I have not made a lot of clothing, but I am very interested in it and I'm working on it. So I did not have a pattern for this. <clears throat> I saw, and I don't know if it was in a Facebook feed or if it was on a Instagram feed, but I saw where someone had knitted a turtleneck, short sleeve turtleneck. Um, so I thought, well, that's pretty. I wonder if I can crochet one. So I decided to. And so this is my short sleeve turtleneck and I have put a white blouse under it because I believe this is how I'm gonna wear it. I think a white blouse. I also have a very light blue blouse I think I could wear under it. Um, but let me get this down. Uh, okay, so here we go. Um, I think the turtleneck turned out great. So I'm gonna, gonna show you all the mistakes I've made and I knew better, especially for this one. When I, I did the front panel, I did the back panel, and then I put them together. Okay, so when I sewed the turtleneck, I sewed it or joined it all together, all the way up from the outside. So that means when I roll it down, you can see where it was joined. So I should have joined so far up on the um, on the underneath side. <laughs> I should have joined so far up like I did, but then I should have stopped and continued joining from this from this side. So when I roll it over, you wouldn't see the join. Am I making any sense? So I sh if I had continued to join, I did great joining all the way up to probably, to probably right here. At this point, I should have come on the outside and joined all the way up. So cause see, what you do not see here, you can see, but it's okay. Um, that's my first, first one. So, um, and I did do the ribbing at the bottom, which I really like, and it kind of, flares a little bit and um, ruffles is what I'm trying to say. Kind of ruffles a little bit and I like that. Now what I wish I hadn't done, I wish I had not put this ribbing on the sleeve. I wish I had just done a double crochet, a single crochet border around the arm holes, which with that being said, I probably could frog that and take it out, but I don't know. You can see both arms. I still think it's going to be pretty. If I truly, truly, truly wear this and I hate this, I probably shouldn't say hate it, but really, really dislike this, I will frog it because it was, you know, it's joined, it won't hurt the rest of the sweater. It's joined separately, so. But yes, here is my sweater. I'm excited. Probably going to wear it tomorrow to church. Nice. I think it's pretty. 
I'm going to hang it back up here. You can see. Yeah, I think it's nice. And it's in a metallic, red heart metallic light gray, which again, I used it because I had on, on, on hand and I did not know how it would turn out. I've never made anything without a pattern. So yeah, so I was kind of proud of myself that I've never made anything without a pattern and it turned out to be wearable. So <laughs> I am excited about that. Um, and a little proud of myself for doing that. Um, but I think if I made it again, I would use a lighter weight yarn. I'll probably use some type of DK yarn. Um, probably still an acrylic, but, uh, I would use a DK yarn instead of a or medium yarn but like I said I had it on hand and I had plenty of it so I didn't want to spend any more money on yarn because I was really just practicing but it turned out nice so so that was good okay um, but leave me some comments down below if you like the sweater um, if you would take the ribbing off the arms let me know what you would do what do you think I should do um, I like to have some suggestions on that uh, I do think it turned out fairly well. When you do leave comments, just remember it was my first. <laughs> it is, it is my first garment without a pattern. So try to be a look, try to be kind, which I know you would be. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know if you think I should take, if I should take this ribbing off of the sleeves, or the armholes, I should say, and just go around with a single crochet to border that um, yeah I'm excited to to get your opinions on that okay and I used a five millimeter hook so and I will post that below as well and the project that I am working on is this and I think it's beautiful this is I'm calling it my coat of many colors blanket isn't that pretty and if you watched my last tutorial you will I did a tutorial on how to make these squares these are just granny squares and when you get to the corners you make clusters which makes that really pretty kind of fluffy X in the center but I love this blanket because it is the I'm calling it the coat of many colors because it looks like a patchwork um, blanket um, it reminds me of Dolly Parton sang her song of a coat of many colors and if you know the story behind that she grew up poor in Tennessee, not too far from me, about two and a half hours, um, about two and a half hours from the Smoky Mountains and Pigeon Forge. So she grew up there, very poor, and her mother made her a coat, an actual coat of many colors from scrap um, material that she had. And it was made out of love, even though there were people who had made fun of her when she got to school. Her coat was made for her out of love. And I'm sure it was beautiful. And her mom sealed it with a kiss before she gave it to her. So I think that's a sweet story. And also the coat of many colors from the Bible. Um, from Joseph who was given the coat of many colors from his father because his father loved him so much. Um which that also led to some people, his brothers, being mean to him. And in both situations, I, I, they were je uh, in Joseph's situations, the brothers were jealous. And I say in Dolly's situations, the kids were jealous too that their mothers didn't make them a beautiful coat. So the coat of many colors blanket to me is to represent love because of both of those stories. Both of those stories, the coats were made out of love. So I'm making a blanket of many colors. 
Um, and it's my Coda Mini Colors blanket, and I think it's pretty. And I'm just joining as I go. You can see it's not real fancy, but I didn't want it to be. And this is the back side, which is just as pretty as the front. Um, but yeah, I have several several more rows to go and here are all of the yarns that I am using uh, with that and my hook I'm using a three whoops a 3.5 millimeter hook on this project and I, I thought I silenced it but I guess I didn't <laughs> sorry um, I had some drops alpaca yarn so it is um, a wool yarn so I have several different colors with that um, I have bought from Premier Yarns which I'm really liking the yarns I get from Premier Yarns if you haven't tried them then you know give them a try because I think you would like it as well um, Bella Cash Bella Cash is the name of this yarn and it's 60% fine merino, um, fine merino, super washed wool, 30% nylon, 10% cashmere. It's very pretty and pretty colors. Um, several different colors. I'm not going to show them all to you, but look at this green. Isn't this a beautiful green? I think it's gorgeous. Let me see. I stuck the the tag in here is going to see if it tells the actual color in emerald well that's perfect because it does look like it's emerald but I thought it was a beautiful green greens aren't my favorite color has to be the right shade but that is beautiful for me anyway just my opinion but all kinds of different color of yarns in my basket that I am excited to finish my blanket which I will be honest with you and tell you Here's my basket with all my yarn. Um, I'll be honest and tell you, this will probably take me a little while because this is as far as I have gotten. And I just work on it at night, in the evenings, watching TV. So, And then that is why I don't want to start the other blanket, this blanket, because if I get all of this going, then I will not complete this when I want to. And I think this is going to be so pretty. I'm excited to, I am excited to complete this. And you know, these squares are not, they're not difficult to make. And they're kind of soothing to make because it's kind of therapeutic. Oh, there's that green. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That emerald green. Oh yeah, that's probably my favorite. I think that is going to be my favorite color so far in this. And it kind of looks like a quilt. You know, they made patchwork quilts. So this is my patchwork crochet blanket. Um, but yeah. And that, this is, I will have to say, this is the first time I have made a blanket. And then and join as you go. Um but I will say that I am quite enjoying that because you see progress. You see a lot of progress. So I like this join as you go method. Um, I may show you how I, I may do a tutorial and show you how I'm doing the join as you go. Um, since I did show you how to make the square, um, I should show you how to do a join as you go with it. Um, and it's not, it's not difficult. Isn't that pretty? This is pretty too, this color. Look, look, do you see the hair? I don't know. I just think all the colors are pretty and I just, I just like that it's many colors and it's going to be, like I said, the coat of many colors blanket and it represents... Like I said, love, like all the other coat of many colors that have been made. So, there you go. I hope you like it too. I hope you try it because 
Um, it just adds just a little, you know, a little extra to your corners when you're making your your granny squares. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with granny squares to add um, some color or add, you know, different things to it. And we can talk about that and maybe even show you. I've made some other blankets that I've had made for a while that I may pull out and, and show you some of the different things you can do with granny squares and, and make them look like they're flowers and have you a flower blanket and um, but uh, yeah they look really pretty. Alright so moving on I want to share with you I want to share with you this book this book came from my great-grandmother. Um, my grandmother, my dad's mother, um, is from England. Uh, she grew up in Brighton. And she met my grandfather, my dad's dad, uh, during World War II. Uh, my grandfather was in the military, and uh, so they met. Um and so they ended up getting married um, while in England. And so uh, they had a child um, while they were there. And her name was Wanda, uh, but she passed away. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe she had pneumonia or some type of respiratory condition that there was not medication at that time for to, to help her and to make her well. So and she is still buried over there but I want to flip my camera around and I want to show you some of the pages in this book um, my grandmother has passed away but her sister Audra which is my great aunt Audra she um, she gave me this because she knows that I crochet and so this was her mother's which is my great grandmother um, and her name was Winifred and she married a Milton so her name was Winifred Milton um, so I'm going to, right now I'm going to change my cameras up and I am going to show you some of this. Okay, so I'm back. I have switched cameras and I hope I don't make you all too sick, but uh, I'm going to show you um, some of these uh, designs uh, in this book. Um, my some of this is before 1932 because my grandmother was married in 1932 and on some pages you will still see that she has written um, her uh, maiden name, Wilshire, on the top of the pages. Um, she brought this over with her in steamer trunks on a ship to the U.S. probably in the 1940s and I have tabbed some pages that I just want to share with you, and I hope this works out. Um, if it doesn't, then we can try something else. But uh, the practical crochet, I just think it is so pretty. How to crochet lace and inserts. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I have not tried any of these designs. However, I do want to. Um, they are all written in UK terms. Look how pretty. Even here. I wish these were in color. But I do wonder they may have been done with white yarn anyway. So Here are some more. Uh, and it is the Weldon's Practical Crochet. I love these edgings. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? I am excited to try some of these. And you know, this really just means a lot because it was from my grandma. And perhaps, you know, I got my desire. Look at these old ads. Aren't they beautiful? 
the Weldon set 350 ideas for crochet edgings inserts fillet squares over here 600 ideas and then of course they have the hairdressing ad in here as well and some dressmaking ads here on this page you can see it says Winifred Wilshire which was her last name uh, which was her maiden name so you know that this was prior to 1932 just beautiful look at this detail and all the crochet more edging with the ribbon I love it more of the ads Look at this on this side. The Japanese fan pattern. Isn't that beautiful? So I do hope to uh, make some of these. Oh, I thought this was cute. Look at this. This is a pretty crochet bag. Beautiful bag for carrying the purse, handkerchief, etc. The A pretty crochet bag. Isn't that nice? I also found this to be interesting. And I did look it up just for a second. I didn't find much on it. The man's crochet sleeping helmet. Now I know that people wore sleeping caps uh, years ago just because it was cold. And their bedrooms probably weren't kept as warm. But this reminds me of something that I have seen in movies that is worn underneath a helmet. I suppose to keep from rubbing or chafing. or, But this is, says it's a, it is a sleeping helmet. So apparently they slept in these as well. And perhaps the style for this sleeping helmet was because... It was during wartime and look at that isn't that beautiful isn't that gorgeous 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 and look at this look at this beret it is called ladies Tam O Shanter so pretty And then there's also embroidery shading. Look at that. It's like peacock feathers. So nice. And these hats. I had to show these hats. Look how beautiful they are. I am going to have to crochet a hat. One of these hats for sure. I, I don't know when, but... They are called the Beatrice crochet hat, the Rosalind crochet hat. So pretty. And then I wanted to show you some more yarn ads. And I think I may have skipped it but there was some lace that had been added to pillowcases so I want to do that as well okay I am going to switch camera. I know that my filming was not great when I uh, was showing you the book from my great-grandmother with her all the crochet patterns so I hope you forgive me <laughs> but this book is awesome to me and I really wanted to share a little bit of the history of crochet in my family. Um, it is beautiful the fact that it is so old and that my great aunt Audra has kept it all these years um, that my great grandmother brought this over with her to the United States on a steamer trunk on a ship. Um, she didn't get to jump on a plane with all of her things and find it at the end of a conveyor belt when she got off. 
uh, it was a long trip. Uh, so, and, and she only brought her most important things with her. So I find that fascinating that her crochet book was one of those things. Um, I'm very excited and proud to, to be the owner of that now in our family. I, I hope that you enjoyed seeing it, and I hope that you enjoyed uh, the projects that I shared with you today, um, and I hope that you will be able to have a blessed week, uh, enjoy your family, find peace and happiness in all that you do. If you like this channel, please subscribe and hit the like button and share with your friends. If you would like to comment, share anything that you're doing or making, I would love to hear from you. Uh, also, don't forget to let me know about the sleeves border on this sweater if you think I should take out the ribbing and just add the single crochet border because I'm going back and forth on what to do. Uh, let me know. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.